Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another uh, edition of uh, the AccessOfTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. It's Thursday, right? Thursday, the last uh, update uh, of the week. Obviously, we have another one uh, coming up uh, this weekend. Wow, right? Absolutely wow. Um, I, so I, I was thinking about it this morning, and I said to myself, well, why try to pick a reversal, right? Why try to put yourself in a position that you have to expect something is, is happening. And I almost thought about it. I almost said to myself, it's almost like for the last couple of days, although again, it doesn't make a difference long, short, the market's giving you incredible value. But I woke up this morning and I said to myself, well, why does the market have to do anything, right? It's like that. It's almost like I almost fell into line a couple of days ago with all those people that were sitting on the sidelines for the last three, four months talking about, well, the market's erratic. The market doesn't make sense. The market can't go up. Look what's going on in the economy. The market can't go higher. And I just realized, you know, I, I just realized today at Morning Strategy um, that just go with the flow. It, it, it doesn't make a difference. You know, I thought about it one day. I was waiting for a reversal that never came. And the next day, I kind of got my reversal, right? Kind of got my reversal. Today, you know, we kind of got a reversal. We kind of got some amazing action from both sides. And I, I think the key is not trying to sit there and say, well, this is has to happen. Again, I'm the first person that will tell you nothing ever needs to happen. Uh, to be prepared, absolutely. To be, uh, you know, to be eyes wide open, 100%. Uh, but the idea that the market needs to do anything is absolutely silly. And, you know, it took me two days to kind of realize that and kind of come to a conclusion. Again, didn't really affect my trading uh, the last couple of days. But kind of going into tomorrow, my new theory is, well, look, again, be very, very conscious that, again, we are linear, right? And then, you know, again, just looking at the cues, uh, the cues have gone from March from 164. We're talking about 100 points on the cues, right? So irrational, absolutely. But the idea that we need to pull back at any given day is kind of on the table. And I will going, going forward, I will keep my eye for it. Like today, you'll see in a few minutes, we had some aggressive longs, some aggressive, uh, some aggressive shorts. But I think keep one eye open, be conscious that they cope, could pull at any time. But at the same time, you know what? Go with the flow. The market's incredibly strong. The action, especially today, to a fantastic action today, really, really aggressive action. Uh, even a trade, you know, even like Tesla, for example, you had uh, a big pivot to the downside, and then the day end, you had a big pivot to the upside. And that's the greatest part about what we're seeing in the market. I'm just using Tesla as an example. Roku has been a beast, right? That was definitely my trade of the day today. Roku has been a beast. Amazon is going to a completely different, Amazon now is literally going up 100 points a day. It's, it's just go, literally going up 100 points a day. Um, so the action is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the scoreboard means absolutely nothing. If you look at uh, the Dow today, right? If you look at the Dow, matter of fact, if you look at the Dow chart, the Dow is down 350 points. We were down like around 450. You know, you, you could start seeing these beta names get strong. And there were some pretty good pivots to the downside today. But you could see these pivots getting just stronger, excuse me, these stocks getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And I joked around around 12 o'clock when the Dow was up, you know, down 450 points. I turn around and say, well, what time does the market go green? When I mean the market, it doesn't mean the Dow, it means the Qs. It means the Nasdaq composite. And again, there's a huge disconnect in the market. Um, does that really bother me? Eh, probably not. Again, if you look at the Dow, and I'm just using the diamonds as kind of a, a side note here. You can see this range, this really tight channel. The Dow has been kind of doing a ping pong, you know, up and down, up and down. Uh, same thing with the Russell today, right? With the IWM, the smaller cap names. Again, stuck into this channel, but again, held the bottom. And, it, you know, it looks like every single time it held the bottom, it kind of bounced. And that's kind of what it did today. But when you look at the cues, right? You look at the cues, uh, you know, you look at the cues, you know, again, you could, you could do the comp, you know, what is it? C-O-M-P-Q, I guess, right? composite, uh, right? I mean, it doesn't make a difference what you do. I mean, the, the NASDAQ composite was up 55 points. So there's a huge disconnect 
uh, a lot of times um, in the indexes, okay? But I think at this juncture of my life, and I think a lot of you guys, especially in, in, in the live webinar, uh, really appreciate this. It doesn't matter. It, do, it just doesn't matter. It's individual value. Uh, certain days, like yesterday, for example, we had value. We talked about this on, uh, on the video yesterday. We did have value yesterday, but it was spread apart. It was really, really spread apart the whole day. You had a little, you know, I caught a couple of short scalps in the morning yesterday, and then it took like two, three hours before another pivot. Today was really just incredibly aggressive, right? Like there was longs, there was shorts. Uh, the, the, the number one play today was definitely Roku. We were, we've been talking about Roku now for like four or five days, the 130s, the 135, the 140s. And we saw today, once it finally broke out, and we'll talk about the pivot in a second, once it finally broke out, we started seeing 140 calls, 145 calls, 150 calls. We saw 170 calls. We saw September 200 calls, okay? Again, that's where the market is. That's where the mindset is right now. People are willing to chase. And if you have the flexibility to stay patient, right? And eliminate the FOMO and say to yourself, look, I don't want to chase the stock that's incredibly overextended. I'll wait for the value. I'll wait for the range. And you'll see in examples today, it wasn't just Roku, right? It was space for God's sake, SPCE. A um, couple other names, right? A couple other names as well that had nothing to do with beta. But the point is the value now is not in the Amazon as much as Amazon looks amazing, right? As much as this stupid thing looks out of control, and Nvidia is, you know, out of control, right? All these stocks are out of control. The value is still on names, right? Like this, right? The value is still on names like this. The value is still, you know, first leg up today on Roku. Man, this thing has more room, right? This thing has more room to go. That's where the value is. The last thing you want to do is keep on pressing the names that go up 100 points a day. It doesn't, it doesn't even make sense. And if, if somebody would even tell you, four or five months ago when this whole COVID started, that I would be saying, forget about the names that are going up 100 points a day. You would think I'm speaking in a completely different language, but that's kind of where we are. Maybe 100 points on everything is a little bit of an exaggeration, but you kind of get the point. Stocks are just going absolutely nuts. There's value on both sides of the market. Uh, the airlines, you know, the airlines, for example, a couple of days ago broke down, right? You can see exactly what happened here. So you're getting the macro companies, right? The cruise ships, the airlines, you're getting the macro companies that were weak because of COVID are starting to be weak again because of reality. And you look at Boeing, for example, right? Same thing. This is, you know, this is the first close below rising support. This Boeing, if this thing confirms tomorrow, it's dead, right? Again, there's, there's no such thing as subjective technical analysis. You could be wrong. You could be a day off. But there is no such thing as subjective technical analysis. Once it confirms and you believe the theory that stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, well, here is demand. First close under the demand and look how much room it has all the way down to the 167, even 162 if things get very, very uh, aggressive. So again, this market is just, just incredibly violent in a good way. Um, you, you do definitely need to be patient. You definitely have to understand the ramifications. Keep that one eye open, right? Make sure again, if you see softness, don't start buying into strength. So you have to be aware of that. But overall, you, you are getting, we are getting, you know, some really uh, great value. So uh, let's talk about the day. Uh, this was by far, right? This is by far my, my number one play today. Uh, I mean, to, to catch like a $3 and change candle on Roku right from the word go, was pretty good, right? Like I thought it was gonna to stop today about 143, went to 150, okay? Or at least it was about to go to 150. So uh, amazing, amazing move. So here's R Roku. We talked about this 136 level uh, for many updates, right? Many updates, we've seen it and I kept on saying, uh, well, it still hasn't, you know, we're still watching, we're still watching. Here's the 136 top here, 136 top here. It finally broke the 136 and just exploded. Uh, the next level of interest is this 150, 120 area. So for Roku, I know a lot of you guys are still holding runners uh, for tomorrow. Excuse me, my Disney cup, right? But for all you guys who are not uh, in Roku overnight, okay, the, the gift tomorrow is a week open. If it can give a, a week open and go into rising support, you see this You see this orange line? A lot of you guys at home are not going to know what this orange line is. For us, this is our lifeline. This is the whole point of identifying the shortest term trend where stocks bounce. And if you see here, right, hits the orange line, bounce, hits the orange line, bounce, hits the orange line, bounce, hits the orange line, bounce. So 
any move tomorrow into rising 60 minute support, we have to get long, obviously red to green and uh, confirmation about today's highs, but really super move there. Uh, I was waiting for, uh, you know, I was waiting for this area and beyond that never got there. Okay. Uh, I still like this 147, but the problem is it's not anywhere near it. Uh, shop 1040 rejection needs to reclaim and build. Here's shop. I think it's going to, I mean, assuming the market stays alive tomorrow. Here is the 140, right? Here's the whole 140 area. Excuse me, 1040, 1040, 1040, 1040. It went to uh, 1053. Uh, 52 week high is right here. You know, 52 weeks high. If they start confirming this 52 week high, uh, we could see a move to 1090, 1100. We saw, I forgot what month it was, but we did see a buyer come in for the 1100 call short term. I think it was either end of July or uh, August, but we did see 1100 call buyers. So I still like it for tomorrow. Nice move there today. Uh, this crap didn't do anything. Uh, NVAX 1050, 10, uh, 101 needs to build. Not a big move at all. Uh, here was NVAX. Not a big move at all. So it took out this uh, 1050, right? Uh, it took out this 1050, 101 and only went up, you know, 20, 30 cents, nothing completely turned around and died. Uh, again, it's not beta, right? Uh, space, this was a monster move. We saw a lot of really aggressive call buying coming in today. Uh, the 19s, the 20s, we even saw the 24s, short-term expiration. Uh, space, 1750 needs to build, exploded. I mean, absolutely exploded. And we talk about this all the time. You don't need to trade beta, right? You don't need to have a, a, a million dollar account, five million dollars. I mean, the, the, it, the, there's such such weird, you know, when you we, when you, people talk about beta, they don't they don't know. They think you need like a fifteen million dollar account to trade. You don't. You absolutely don't. You're trading the process. You're not trading the stock. So if you want to trade a space compared to Tesla, that's your priority. It's going to work for small caps again, as long as they have ranges. Small caps, mid caps. It works for futures. It works for Bitcoin, cryptocurrency. Um, anything, anything to do, Forex, anything to do, as long as there's volume and there's a range and there's expansion potential, it's going to work for it. So here is 1750 on space, this whole channel here, it broke, it just exploded, went to uh, 1950, a lot of call buying. I know a lot of you guys are still long this thing uh, overnight. Huge move here. Um, Zoom, right? Zoom, um, 1270. Needs to build uh, again. Not a huge move in Zoom, but but again, this is one of those names that were overextended. So again, you're not you're not looking for a fifty dollar move on an overextended stock. But here is one seventy and uh, went to uh, excuse me two seventy went to two seventy three before reverse course. Uh, again, we had a pretty good conversation today about expanded uh, expanded charts. Right, stocks that already made a big move. Uh, compared to stocks coming out of an intermediate or bottom channel, your expectations should be really, really curbed for the ones already exploded because they're so far away uh, from from the, the original pivot. So you got you have to be, you have to take faster profits there. Here is the first. There was three pivots today on Tesla. Okay, uh, fourteen hundred. I said fourteen hundred initially. I said look, uh, thirteen ninety six, thirteen ninety seven needs to build. Measured move fourteen ten, fourteen eleven. I said you know what, fourteen hundred better. So here is the first move on Tesla. Right here is this morning's. So it took out it took out the fourteen hundred. I don't know what this thing is. It took out the fourteen hundred. It went right to supply. It didn't quite get to the fourteen ten. It got a tad under fourteen oh nine. But again, that's what we were expecting. We were just expecting a move right into uh, the lower Bollinger Band. Uh, excuse me, the upper Bollinger Band for rejection. And we'll show you several more pivots on Tesla in a second. But Tesla was a monster all day today. Again, huge move. I mean, really, really huge move here. Uh, 136, my, my highest sales were in the 140s. Uh, I mean, big move. I mean, really, really big move. I, again, I didn't, it's hard for me not to take a, a big spike like that. Um, it would be, it's so much easier when you're managing a trade and it goes 20 cents at a time. But these beta stocks, when they give you three, four, five, six, seven, how do you not take it off? Okay. And the most amazing part is it never gave you it really never gave you a dip. So for tomorrow, I have to look for kind of a, a makeshift entry to kind of to validate a second uh, second wave. Again, nice spike on space. Uh, shop, again, uh, 50, 1060s to 52 week highs. Uh, big move on spike. Uh, ZM takes them off. And here is to the downside, right? Here is the downside as well. Again, Tesla to the upside, 1400, went to 1409. Now, Tesla, 1373 if it builds below can flush. Experienced traders, and again, that's the most important thing, guys. Always take second entries. You cannot hit bids, okay? Number one, these stocks are now trading a dollar, two dollar, three dollar spreads. If you hit a bid and there's a reload buyer, you're dead. They're going to spread you out back the other way. It has to be a second entry. So, Tesla. 
Uh, it broke the 1373, put in a low of uh, 13, excuse me, 1370, and then rallied. And look what happened on that second entry uh, below 1370, right? So it takes out 1370 and goes all the way down to 1351. Just a huge move, right? So you got an eight nine dollar move into supply. You got another twenty dollar move into support. And there's gonna be another one. There's gonna be another one in a few minutes. Uh, shop. Uh, Netflix got killed. Um, well, killed in layman's terms, got killed. If builds below 500 can flush, this is when they started pulling the futures. So here was Netflix, right? Here was Netflix. Here was the 500. You see it? 500, 500. It broke 500, went right into the next support. Again, stocks trade from supply to supply, demand to demand. So traded down to the 496 area, and then obviously it held. Again, this is what these stocks are doing. They're holding support, and they're going right back up. So if, you're an, if you are an inexperienced short seller, and don't know that these supply or demand zones are there. You're literally the emotional seller into a technical buyer. You're going to lose literally nine out of 10 times. So it's very, very important to understand where the supply and demand zones are. So nice move on Netflix. Um, this, should be a, this should be actually an airplane going down, but it's not. Um, so yeah, so 1345 on deck went to 51. So 45 on there. Amazon, obviously now we got there. And this was the final pivot, right? This is the final pivot on Tesla. Uh, 1385 needs to build on the wake up, right? To wake up, okay? So, and I said, look, take on the way up and obviously now use break even as your stop. And I said, look, 1399, 14 is supply and Tesla, da, 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 da. Here, here's, the third, you know, here's the 85 pivot. I don't know what this line is, so forgive me. Here's the 1385 pivot and went right to supply of like 1400 and change so really really nice move there uh, i also put in a pivot on was it uh, was it was it netflix 506 i didn't see netflix into the close uh, let me see what netflix did into close yeah so yeah I, I wasn't even here so yeah 506 so you can see here's the 506 pivot and netflix looks like it went to 510 so if you caught netflix great job i was already uh playing basketball with my kids so Ideally for tomorrow, again, uh, we have long setups, uh, we have short setups, and again, the new mantra is expect the market to do good things. I know that word good is a really, really broad statement, but it's going, giving us, again, really great opportunities every single day. You're getting your washes, you're getting your long pivots, you're getting your short pivots, you're getting your monster option flow. I think it's time to realize, you know what, we're just in a good tape. Always be cautious, have one eye always on the futures, but again, trade what's in front of you. Great job, everybody. I will see you tomorrow. For all you guys who are just getting this recording, I will see you guys on the weekend update. Have a great, great night, everybody, and I'll see you on the field tomorrow. Take care. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.